guys, DMS here. Today we are talking about the new Mikey Mike album, Life on Earth. Also, just want to note, there's a ton of boxes behind me. Why? Because this sound system in this room is going to Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. If you're going to that, make sure you stop by room 9105. I'll be there with all these speakers, and you can listen to music the way we're listening to music. And speaking of that, today we have a sponsor. Ditto Coffee. Uh, it's a blend. It's a 60% Brazilian, 20% Ethiopian, 20% Guatemalan. Guatemalan. It's got a caramel, uh, full body flavor. Yep, caramel, pear, and a floral finish. Pretty decent. It's 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 actually pretty good coffee, and yeah. for the price point, I would drink it every day. Yeah, no, I w So we fixed up a batch of this earlier, and I was like, okay, this is like some super expensive ass coffee. No, it was actually like pretty cheap. It's like what, I think it's under, like seven pounds or yeah. something like that. So, it's from Liverpool bad. in the UK. If you want to order some, it's online. Um, very, 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 very strong. Very strong. Very strong coffee. Yeah. But I dig it. It's yeah. very full. Um, great flavor. So today we listened on the SVS Ultras. I just played the whole album through, and we got some notes on it. Pleasantly impressed. It's it's kind of cool because you don't typically hear, uh, I guess I would consider this like a singer-songwriter folk kind of rock mm -hmm. sound. Um but you don't typically hear skits. There's there's three, I believe. Right. We had like some Eminem skits thrown in there it throughout the album. And and you know uh, the first one, apparently Mikey Mike is a serial impregnator. Right. Um, pull out game weak, as he would tell you. Um, it, then it goes into the second song or the, the first song rather, which is stingy, lyrically hilarious. Yeah. The and there there was. An interesting sound at the beginning. There was like an electric piano and guitar. It generated some dissonance, which was interesting. Uh, this is my f this song right here was the very first time I'd ever even heard this artist to begin with, and I was getting um, some Rex Orange County vibes off yeah. this track. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Um, my my I, the only complaint I actually really had about this entire track was I would love to see this artist with a little higher production quality. Right, and I mean you know smaller level artist, but he's gaining steam but yeah. i agree i think to put him in and just like a sick insane studio yeah that would be i think beautiful. that would have really given me a lot more appreciation for this track because musically i liked it and i feel like the production definitely i i could see where he was going with it too and i can see there was a big sound uh behind what i was hearing but it it, it could have been taken to an extra it's like you said the rex orange county thing and i and i at points was hearing like just the way the vocals were playing off of the production it's like a Radiohead kind of vibe, mm -hmm. but I feel like he might have been able to get transcended that far if he would have been able to be in a better studio. Right. And I don't know where he recorded this, but I mean, it's not it's not bad production quality. It definitely it just, wasn't bad. And there were some tracks that stood so out. Much hard. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and in fact, there was a very specific one. I'm trying to think which one it is. We'll get to it eventually. Um, moving on from there, the third track. I it, it was a good track, but I kept hearing vibes of. Uh, that uh, can't stop the feel in Justin Timberlake's song. Yeah, I could hear that in my head playing over this song. I I, I interpret it as like a less dark version of, of pumped up kicks. Yeah, but this was a breakup song. Oh, and for it was, sure. It was it was complete anthem. This is a, yeah. it, that's one of those songs where people are gonna know the lyrics to it. You're gonna be singing it in the car with your friends. Um, which I mean, there's like there's always this like stigma in music where it's like oh I hate those, but at the same time like you love them. Yeah. So I mean, I feel like it's cool. I think the anthem vibe that it had mm -hmm. gave it a little bit more of, it made it more fun. Yeah, it's an anthem song that I can, I don't, I don't want to say tolerate because I feel like that's the, the wrong way to say it because I enjoyed it. Yeah, exactly. But it's an anthem song that I did actually enjoy, and it's it's I mean it's relatable. It's a breakup song. Everybody can relate to that. Uh, moving on from there, number four. Um, the only thing I wrote down was uh, the line where he said, "No, I don't want to have kids. I am a kid." And that, and it's so true. I think that's what's awesome about Mikey is that he's just so unapologetically himself. Yeah. And it's so real. And like the the song starts out like the whole concept, I guess, is a conversation with his mom, which was super dope. But it was like at the end, there's a a kids choir that comes in and sings the yeah. hook. And it like I know they didn't write the song, but hearing kids sing it like gave me hope for humanity. Yeah, that was nice. That was like some Macklemore vibes. Uh, yeah. um, it it, it kind of does. It kind of jumps around from these vibes from artist to artist, but still maintains his own consistent sound. There's a lot of honesty in this, um, in the music. You know, it's a lot of like, let's just straight up talk about doing cocaine and fucking all these women. Yeah, there's lots and of, like lots of women in cocaine. In this. That did get a little bit old. That like that that thematically did get a little bit old. But I appreciate the honesty in it. Um, 
It just didn't I, seem fabricated. I feel like so much yeah. art now is just like you're telling people what they want to hear, and I think this is what people should hear yeah. in terms of lyrics, except for, like you said, it is a little excessive on, it, on the drugs and women thing. It but. was excessive, but it didn't feel like somebody was just kind of pulling something out their ass for it. Yeah. Um, I would like to see his musical talent put towards a more diverse subject matter. But, I mean, you can't force someone to write songs about something they're not feeling. You write music based on whatever it is you're trying to express. And if you want to express drugs and women for a whole album, then by all means. 100%. And I think it's I think it's cool, but, but like you said, it does get a little overplayed at points. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, like you said, you can't force someone to write an album about something. And it's this album's just about life. It's a yeah. life on earth. And if I, I mean, if I had to boil it down, like, yeah, if I were to write music about half the stuff in my life, it would probably be like women and crap like that. For so, sure. I, I can get that. Number eight got a little bit more poppy. I, I'm not, I'm not a big pop person, but it, that felt a little bit more like a pop song. Mm -hmm. A lot of repetition in there. And that one lost me a little bit lyrically, but there was really interesting vocal sound um, with decent separation. I feel like the production quality in this track stood out among several of the other tracks. A lot. Yeah. And so, I think it had to with the repetitiveness of it. Right. That one, and actually the one after that too, had a really big sound with uh, some really clear drums in it. And I did like that. Um, I really feel like the production quality and the mixing stood out really far on this track. Once again on that one, Drugs and Girls got a little bit old, but I didn't find myself not enjoying it. I felt like the piece as a whole was really cohesive. It was very thematic. It didn't jump around too much. Um... Did I say thematic? Because I feel like it was pretty thematic. Yeah, and um, I mean, like, and I think it's funny because you said about the sound, the way that the production was on it. I compared it to swimming in a pool of honey. It was very soft. Very soft and yeah. very, like, fluid and, and viscous. Yeah, and that's something I'll say about production. Generally speaking, when I think of, like, something that may or may not be lacking in production, I usually think of tracks that are compressed or sibilant. There was some compression at times. Um, nothing was ever sibilant. And believe me, we would have heard it. We're listening on a decent system. We would have heard if there was, you know, harsh, distorted highs, and there wasn't. It was a very smooth mix. Um, I feel like with access to better microphones, better preamps, whatnot, we'd hear a little bit more space in that mix. Right. But with the equipment that they had, whatever it was, it sounds like they did a decent job. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, like, it, it didn't seem like it was too forced or that they had to do too much. Right. No, yeah, nothing, nothing on the album felt forced. Um... Do the the la uh, not the last the last song is this phone number that uh, he posted on a billboard apparently right that was a pretty funny um, recording of a bunch of people leaving him voicemails but the one before it the last skit before that was called Dark Mark loves drones or love drones right that shit was weird it was cool that was pretty strange but it was like it was also like it sounded like a Scientologist like yelling yeah. at somebody or trying to like shame them. Or, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen those videos. They're weird, too. But the one before that, number 11. Yeah. The Okay, so the, the ones that really stood out, 11 and 3, for me. Yeah. 11, it started again on, like, the drugs and girls thing. It departed from that for, like, a verse, a solid verse. Yeah. Um, and I really liked that verse. He kind of changed his vocal sound a little bit, and it really stood out to me. Um, and, of course, it goes back to that theme a little bit, but that... that that break in that theme did feel nice and it kind of shows I feel like this guy could really push into these different ideas and take that horse and ride it. I said on that one I was um, I felt one I really liked the mix on it the way that it, it like felt like the mix was like living in mm -hmm. the room um, I also really enjoyed just conceptually it's about life and it's about your experience and what you make of it is yeah. what I took it as um, and I think that's kind of a beautiful concept because you can interpret it however you want, as you should with any art. Right. I mean, overall, across the board, too, we're, you know, these are all very familiar themes. Mm -hmm. These are all things we've heard before. Um, these are all very familiar chords. We're not looking at any groundbreaking chord structures, but they are being used in a way that I think is uh, reasonably refreshing. His vocal take on everything is very pleasant. The uh, instrumentation, the musicality of the whole album is very well put together. And overall, I liked the piece. You know, I can, like I said, I can harp all day about how I want to branch out more from its core themes. But overall, I feel like this was a very cohesive album that had a direction and stuck to it. And, and that was what I think was the best part for me was just 
the fact that it didn't divert so much right. and the fact that the way the instruments played off of each other and the production played off of itself mm -hmm. was all very cohesive. Well, he knows his strengths and he's sticking For to it. For sure. And I feel like as an artist, that's one of the smartest things that you can do is not, don't try and be something you're not. Don't try mm -hmm. and go like, yes, be outside of the box. But, you know, if you know you're really good at something, I'm not saying don't learn other things, but drive those home. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, that was a quick one, but really, I don't, I don't know if I have much more to say on that. Uh, I didn't have too notes? much to critique, but yeah. I mean, it's also like, you know, we had our, our qualms with it, but mm -hmm. overall, super strong project, super happy with it. Um, yeah. So I think that's all we got, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you think about this album. In the video description, there will be a link to this Ditto Coffee. Make sure you check them out, as well as a Patreon where you can get early access to videos like this one. It's only a dollar, so... If you like these videos, you get them a little bit sooner than everyone else. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until next one, guys. Peace.